remember, mandatory bike check-in for all the athletes goes on from 10 until 5 tomorrow. So that's the scoop. Everything is uh, available at Ironman.com. Just go click on there and you'll be halfway to it all. So again, we're going to start up in about 10 minutes or so. Welcome or welcome back to Augusta. This is year seven, so it's good to have you back. The largest Ironman 70.3 in the world. The Augusta Sports Council, our mission is we strengthen the quality of life and economic well-being for the city of Augusta and surrounding counties through recruiting, supporting, and attracting sporting events. So we recruit sporting events to Augusta. Um, we attract them. We want them to come and see our city. A half Ironman is, um, in Augusta is a 1.2 mile swim in the Savannah River, a 56 mile bike ride through um, South Carolina, and then they finish with a 13.1 run, which is a half marathon um, in downtown Augusta. It's the largest half Ironman in the world. And I think that, you know, people, they like to come to this course because they like the course. They like, you know, swimming in the river. They like it's a pretty flat course. They like, you know, riding a bike in a different state right next to us. They really, um, they really enjoy the course. And the other thing that we've heard from countless athletes um, and people who are just visiting with the athletes is how wonderful the community is, how the community comes out and how they love seeing those people on the sidelines cheering them on. There's athletes that come and they say, I would not have been able to make it that last mile if these people weren't here, you know, cheering me on. The community is, it's, you know, they're great help with that. Well, there's definitely finding a balance for sure and there have been years where I've trained six six days a week and of course my work would suffer or you know I'd feel like I wasn't on top of things at work um, or I would miss my family or might not see my husband as much as I want to so you know um, it's it's definitely finding a balance and I think there are definitely triathletes that do that much better than I do they get up really early and they go to bed really early <laughs> but I like to I like I like to be up late. I'm a night owl and, um, you know, I'm not the best at prioritizing my time. Well, normally I've had a training plan and this year I, I followed, I did it a little more loosey-goosey laid back. I just made sure that I tried to do two swims, two runs and two bikes every week. And, and I actually did usually three runs and um, three bikes every week and only about one swim a week, but it's, um, it's worked out good. So I have, you know, grown up in Augusta my entire life. I just knew it as the triathlon that took place downtown and, you know, kind of tried to avoid going downtown because, you know, the roads were closed and it was like a big mess. And I'm so mad at myself for, for doing that. You know, I never, we're never really understanding what it, you know, what it was. My mom and my grandma, they came um, and they just stood at the finish line the entire time. And just, I mean, it was just, they said it was incredible to watch those athletes come across the finish line. They loved it. And it's just, it's a great environment and the spirit of the community and the athletes and their families. It's just, it's a really a powerful place to be. I started doing endurance events, uh, started running with my sister Katie. She convinced me to train for a half marathon in 2004. We, we started training for an event that was in 2005. And after we ran our first half marathon, uh, she convinced me to do a full marathon the next year. And so we trained for that together because of course I can't have my big sister train for something like that and not be a part of it. If she starts after me, then I will see her pass me on the bike. But this year she will be starting before me on the swim, so I don't expect to see Carrie. Even though she did not train this year nearly as much as me, she will still pass me. Well, she won't pass me because she will already be ahead of me and I will not pass her. She will still beat me. She has five years of youth on her side and she's a better athlete. So. <laughs> I keep coming back and participating every year because um, it's my it's in my own backyard. I grew up in Augusta. Um, all but the first two years of my life, I've lived here, um, and then of course uh, about five years in college. But um, it is 
it's home and it's such a great event and I feel like as long as I'm able-bodied and you know able to participate even if I'm not fast um, you know it's just fun to be out here and be around all this uh, excitement and energy. Um, I think that a lot of people think they need to get into shape to do it and I always like to say that you should do it and get into shape on your journey. Um, if I can do it, anybody can. Like I said, I'm a back of the packer. My sister's a little more of a middle of the packer. We've got people in our club that are, you know, hoping to, to win an age group award. And you don't have to already be a good athlete to get started. You just need to get started. Um, okay, so this race has come to mean I, I can't quit. <laughs> this, this, this race um, represents not quitting. So, so many times I've just, I've, I've thought about like, oh, I can't do this anymore, I'm tired, I can't work, I can't do triathlons anymore, you know, I'm overwhelmed, there's all these things pulling me in different directions, and then I'm like, I'm able-bodied, and I'm getting sad because uh, tomorrow is the anniversary of the, the death of a friend of mine that was killed in Afghanistan, and I, I do this because he can't. And I had another friend that was hit by a car last week when she was running, and she's still in the hospital. And um, so I do this because she can't. So when I get tired, um, when I get tired or when I get frustrated or when I feel overwhelmed, I just I remember that this is something <laughs> that I'm going to do until I can't do it anymore. And then, um, yeah, so it's just it's something that... I do because I'm not a quitter and it's an endurance event so you just you do it until you can't do it anymore. It's a really a powerful place to be. You don't have to already be a good athlete to get started. You just need to get started. You just you do it until you can't do it anymore. get done with my bike and I see my sister Katie in transition and since she started after me and she was in transition I knew she had beat me on the bike and I was so happy for her and I said what are you doing in transition and she said she said I just finished and I was like oh no <laughs> I said oh yay but oh no because <laughs> I knew I was like oh this will be the year she's gonna beat me and that's when I knew oh my gosh <laughs> That's awesome because Kira usually is like a whole hour ahead of me in the race. And so I was like, whoa. And she saw me and she said, you must have had a really good bike. And I said, I did. I wanted to beat my sister because <laughs> she's trained really hard for this. And she did so amazing. She did like a 40-minute PR or something. PR is a personal record. And mine was my slowest by 20 minutes. And it wasn't, it wasn't great. But I still beat her. <laughs> I was elated. I was just so happy. And then when I crossed the finish, I just wanted to burst into tears because I just, it, I'd made my goal and gone way past it. And normally I let myself down a little bit. And I don't know if it's because my goals in the past have been a little bit, um, well, I just worked really hard this year. So I was just so happy. I am so glad it's over. <laughs> it was tough. I knew it was going to be tough, and it was. It lived up to that. Um, but I got through it.